Go. Hi, good afternoon everyone. Okay, inviting you to register and like and share our live stream if you want to have a certificate of event participation. Okay, let me share my screen. My stream yard. Okay, I'll be adding our instructor, Sir James De Ocampo, 3D animation instructor from UE. Hello, ma'am, Nancy. Good afternoon. Ayan, good afternoon to you. <laughs> okay, sige, Sir James. Uh, let's uh, share screen. Shall we start? Okay, while we are waiting uh, for the share screen, inviting you to join us in meetup.com slash Autodesk Community Philippines. Okay, and we also have Autodesk Maya, user group Philippines in... Facebook. And don't forget to join us in Autodesk Community Philippines. Like and follow. Okay, I'll be adding the screen of Sir James. Ayan. Go ahead, po. Thanks, Ma'am Nelsey, for inviting me. And okay, so today our topic will be about 3D modeling for beginners. Okay, so this webinar is focused on uh, 3D modeling basics, the fundamentals. So even if you're not using Autodesk Maya, maybe you can use the fundamentals of 3D modeling that we will be able to discuss for today. Okay, so before that, I'll introduce myself. Hello, I'm James Rafael Del Campo, 3D and VFX professor at University of the East, Manila. And also, I'm a 3D and multimedia artist okay, for games and um, films. Okay. So, our topic is about 3D modeling. Okay. So, what is 3D modeling? Okay. Based on its definition online, let's read it. In 3D computer graphics, 3D modeling is the process of Developing a mathematical coordinate-based representation of any surface of an object, inanimate or living, in the three dimensions via specialized software by manipulating edges, vertices, and polygons in a simulated 3D space. So this is the technical definition of 3D modeling, but let's simplify it a bit so the beginners can also understand. Okay, so modeling. Okay, we can compare it to digital sculpting creates virtual 3D models. Okay, a digital 3D modeler creates a virtual 3D model of a character or objects. Then the final 3D model is a virtual digital wireframe of points and edges that connects them together. Okay, so like what we learned on our school before in geometry, the points and edges so a uh, 3d model is basically a polygon that is made in digitally okay let's, let's look at some examples okay so for example this uh, 3d model created by daniel ariaga okay of lotso from toy story so here are some sketches and here is the wireframe which was mentioned earlier the wireframe of the 3D model created of that. So, so it's um, composed of points, okay, and lines. Until we create, we are able to create the actual 3D model. Let's look at other examples. Also, here is Carl from the movie Up. Okay, so just like the first example, it's made up of wireframe. Okay, his cane, 
and the actual human character. Okay. 3D models doesn't have to be also simple. There are also more complicated or yes, more complicated characters. For example, here's a digital digital double of Will Smith. Okay. So we can create from simple up to hyper realistic models. Okay. So next, what is the application or software that we are going to use for today? So we're going to use the software Autodesk Maya. Okay, there are other 3D modeling softwares, but today we're going to use Maya. So Autodesk Maya, commonly shortened to just Maya, is a 3D computer graphics application that runs on Windows, Mac, OS, and Linux. It is used to create assets for interactive 3D applications, including video games, animated films, TV series, and visual effects. Okay. So let's proceed to the actual demo. I'll just share my screen. Share screen. Ayan, Sir James, can we adjust the volume? Okay. A little louder. Thank you. Man. Hello, hello. Okay. Yeah, okay. So let's begin. Um, here is the uh, interface of Maya. Okay, when you first download and open Maya, this is what you will be able to see. Okay. If you want to make sure that this is the default workspace, you can go to Windows at the app upper uh, left corner of your um, software and go to windows then workspace and then reset maya classic to factory default okay so we will be able to make sure that we have the same interface okay so you might be scared at first when you this is your first time to handle maya especially when this is your first time to handle a 3d software but don't be scared or don't worry since we will begin at the very basics of um, interacting with the software okay so let's go first with the viewport okay this large area at the center of our screen this is called the viewport okay everything that we will do inside of maya we will see here, okay, all the modeling, animation, okay, all the magic will happen inside of the viewport. So if we will compare it, if we are a painter, this will be our canvas, okay. So next is the shelves, okay. So this is the shelf at the top of our viewport, okay, there are many shelves. So there is for polymodeling, sculpting, rigging, animation, rendering, effects, okay? So there are many shelves right here, okay? But we will focus first in the polymodeling since that will be our topic for today, okay? So here you will see at the first group, there are shapes. So there is a sphere, cube cylinder okay then if you move there are other tools but let's focus first on the basic shapes so let's try this sphere okay when we click one of these shapes our icons let's test it okay there the model will be placed in the middle of our viewport okay so let's press Control Z. Okay. For example, I'll pick the cube. Okay. The cube will be placed in the center of our viewport. Okay. So let's now see what the how to interact with the viewport. Okay. The first tool or the first keys that we're going to use is the scroll wheel. Okay. 
when we use the scroll wheel, okay, it will help us zoom in and zoom out within our viewport. Also, you will see my uh, my key press and mouse clicks in the lower left, so you can um, follow me. So, first tool is scroll, zoom in and out. So, first interaction with the viewport is the scroll for zooming in, in and zooming out. Okay. Next is let's hold Alt and press right click okay that's also the same alt and right click for zooming in and zooming out so it's based on your preference which one would you choose for zooming in and zooming out you can use the scroll wheel or you can use alt and right click okay next let's try orbiting or rotating in the viewport okay what if i want to see the other side of the cube right now i'm only seeing the front side of the cube i want to see the other side so we can use alt then left mouse button okay hold alt then press uh, the left mouse button and you can orbit the viewport or rotate rotate your viewport Okay, so let's write that to uh, plus left mouse button is orbit. Okay, so zooming in is the scroll and then orbiting is alt left mouse. Okay. Then last, last interaction with the viewport. Uh, for example, I zoom in on my model like this and i want to move the viewport okay without rotating the viewport or orbiting the viewport i want to see the upper portion of my model okay i can use the pan tool or hold alt then press the middle mouse button okay and then now i can pan or move the viewport based on where i want to focus so hold alt then middle mouse okay to pan the viewport okay you can do it while you're zoomed out okay alt then middle mouse or also when you're zoom in you can use that so alt press middle mouse button is pan okay also so that's the basics, three basic um, interaction with the viewport, the zooming in and zooming out, orbiting and panning. Okay, next let's try to use the focus. Okay, for example, I have this 3D model cube. I want to focus on it. So I can press the key letter F. Let's press F and Maya will focus on the model that you selected. Okay, I'll create two models, okay, one sphere and one cube, okay. Once I click in the sphere and I press letter F, okay, I will be focused on the sphere model, okay. Then when I click the cube and I press letter F, I will be focused on the cube model, okay. So that's one um, useful tool. F is for focus. So you can utilize this when you're, you have so many models already. Okay, and you want to focus on one, you can just press letter F. So let's delete this first. To delete a model, just press letter D. Or delete. Sorry. Press delete. Okay. Okay, let's focus on the Q. Okay. So here is our basic cube model. Okay. So we want to see its uh, details about it. So we can go to the right side of our screen. If we focus our attention on the right side of our screen. When we click a model, 
here in the channel box, we will see the details of the model. Okay, it's translate in the different axes, X, Y, and Z, the rotation, and the scale. Okay. So, for example, if I move this model, you will see that the translate will also be changed in the channel box. If I move it left and right, it will change in the x-axis. If I move it up and down, it will change in the y-axis. Okay. So let's, we already know how to interact with the viewport. Okay. Let's now focus on how to interact with the actual model. How do I move it? How do I make it bigger or make it smaller? Or how do I rotate it? Okay. So let's um, focus now on the tools on interacting with the actual model. Okay. First, first tool is select tool or letter Q. Okay. Let's press Q. Okay. So select tool is this uh, cursor icon. Just like its name. Okay. Select tool, it will make you select the model. Okay. Next tool is W. When I press W, there will be manipulators, these arrows that will appear. So when I press Q, there are no manipulators. And then when I press W, you will see these arrows. So W is for move tool. Okay, so you can click and hold these arrows. For example, I'll click and drag the arrows forward. And then I can now move this model. So for example, I want to place this model here in the very front of my um, viewport. I can do that using these arrows. Okay. For example, I'll move it here in the left. Or in the right okay so that is the use of the move tool okay so right now we have two choices how to move our model using the w tool or the move tool or we can manually input the coordinates here for example i want to move it three in the z-axis so you can manually input the values here. Or we can use the arrows of the move tool. Okay. Another tip is you can use or you can click in the very middle. Okay. If you click the middle part, okay, you can move it freely wherever you want. So, for example, here in the arrows, you can only move it in one axis okay but if you select the middle part okay you can move it anywhere you like you can move it here or here okay it's up to you where you want to move it okay so that is the second tool first is q select tool for selecting then w move tool for moving the model Next, next tool is letter E. Okay, letter E for rotate tool. Okay, so just like its name, you can use it to rotate the model. And also just like the move tool, it also has a manipulators. Okay, there's a red line, red circular line, green, blue, and yellow. Okay, let's test it. So let's test the um, red first. So just like the move tool, we can click and hold that. And we can now rotate on the direction that we selected. For example, this green, if you rotate that, okay, it will rotate on that axis. Okay, and on the blue, it will rotate now in the Z axis. Okay. So depending on what you need, 
for the model what direction it will be facing, you can rotate the model whichever way you like. So in the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Also, just like the move tool, you can input it manually here in the channel box. Okay, for example, I want to rotate it 45 degrees in the y-axis. Okay, so right now, that is the angle of the rotation of my, my model. Okay, so third tool is rotate tool. Okay, also, another tip is when you click in the middle part, just like the move tool, when I click in the middle part, okay, if I rotate it, okay, I can rotate it freely wherever direction I like. I'm not constrained in this single axis, okay? So you can use that. Click the middle part anywhere in the middle and then rotate freely wherever you want, okay? So next... Next tool, okay? So if you can notice, the tools are all close together. So Q, W, E, and R. Okay, so the last tool is letter R. Okay. First for uh, letters on our keyboard, letter R is the scale tool. Also, all this tool is, you can view in the left side of your screen. So, Q is the cursor icon. W, here is the icon for move tool. Okay, E or rotate tool, here is the icon for rotate tool. And R for the scale tool. Okay, but let's try to um, um, be familiarized with the tools or the hotkeys. So we don't have to click it manually here, okay? So we can uh, make our workflow faster. So Q for select tool, W for move tool, E for rotate tool, and R for scale tool, okay? So what does scale tool do? Okay, let's test it, okay? Just like the move tool, it also has manipulators. Okay. So, for example, I'll click and drag this um, green arrow or green line. Okay. What this does is it scales our model on the direction that we selected. So, for example, I select this yellow line and move it upward. My model will now be scaled bigger or if I will move it downwards, Okay, my model will be compressed and become smaller. Okay, also works on the other axis. For example, this uh, x-axis. Okay, and the z-axis. Okay, so you can manually input it here just like the other tools. Okay, for example, 10. So just like the other tools, you can select the middle part, okay, this cube in the middle, and our model will be scaled uniformly in all directions, okay? So if you want to uniformly scale the cube or whatever model you have, you can just press this and scale it up or scale it down, okay? So those are the four basic tools. Select tool for selecting W or move tool for moving, E for rotating, R for scale. Okay. So yes, that's the four basic tools. Okay. So let's try creating a simple um, 
Uh, let's focus first on the components of a 3D model. Okay, before we proceed in the modeling part. Okay, let's use this cube as an example. Okay. So, one 3D model is composed of uh, three components. Okay, the vertex or the points that create the 3D model, the edge, okay, or the line, and then the face. Okay, when you cannot, when we connect the lines, we will be able to make one face. Okay, so let's explore those components. Okay. First, let's explore the vertex. Okay, right click, hold right click, and let's go to vertex. Okay. okay. So we can see the vertices of our model. Okay. So vertex are just like what I said, are the points that that is um, present in your 3D model, okay? So, here are the points. We can select one point, okay? Or we can select multiple points by holding shift. Okay. okay. So, let's write it down. So, first is the vertex. Vertex or the points. So, how do I go there i'll just click my model hold right click and then hover over vertex and then release okay and then i'll be able to select the vertices that i want okay so let's test let's try to select one vertex and let's use the tools okay for example i use w or move tool i'll move it up and then there I can, okay, manipulate the vertex, the single vertex of my model. Or I can manipulate two vertices at a time. Select them both, move them up and down. Use the rotate tool. Okay. So also rotate tool is, I can use that. And then scale tool. I can also use scale when using the vertices. So that's the first component, the vertex. Okay. So for example, I'm done editing the vertices. I want to go back in selecting my model. But right now, I can't go back. When I click the model, I'll just be able to click the vertex. I can click the main model. So to be able to click the main model again, just hold right click again. And then select object, object mode. When you do that, okay, you'll be able to select the whole model again. Okay, so the object mode. Okay, let's go now to the second component, which is the edge. Okay. So hold right click and then select edge. Release and then right now we can able to select now the edges. Okay. Just like the vertices, we can manipulate it. We can move the edge forward, backward, okay? Rotate it. We can also do that. And scale. We can also scale it. Okay? So depending on what we are modeling right now, we can utilize switch part of the model we want to manipulate is it the vertex is it the edge or is it the entire model okay so for example i can make a pyramid shape by selecting the three at uh, the four edges and then scaling it down okay and then we have a pyramid shape okay so let's go back to the object mode. Hold right click and then over to object mode. Okay. So last component is the face. So hold right click again. Select the model. 
hold right click and hover to the face and release okay so face is the side that is created when we connect the lines or the edges so for example these four edges this one okay they create this face okay so we can move it move it down move it up rotate it okay and scale it okay also we can select multiple faces by holding shift okay. so that is the face so that are those are the three components vertex edge and face and the object mode so object mode is just the model the entire model okay so from what we've learned so far, let's try to make a simple model of a house. Let's delete this one. So for example, I'll use this cube. So these are the walls of my house. I'll create another cube. Okay, then move it upwards using the move tool. Okay, so scale it. I'll use this as my uh, roof. Okay. So I can select the face. So I'll select the face of the second model, second cube. Scale it down. Move it downwards. And there you can create a simple house. Okay. So that's, that's just the basics from the creation of the basic poly model to the basic tools okay the scale the rotate and the move tool and also the components of vertex face and edge okay so those are the basics before we end let's try to use another tool okay we already know the three basic components the vertex edge and face let's try to learn a new tool okay so we can see it here in edit mesh okay so for example okay let's use a new model let's use a poly cylinder okay using this poly cylinder okay one model only will be able to create a simple tree okay so let's scale it down using the scale tool okay then we'll use this as the uh, bottom part of our tree okay then hold right click select face we will select all the top portion of our of our cylinder okay so to select multiple faces, just hold shift, then just click the faces that you want. Okay. So let's proceed with the new tool that we can use. Okay. So when you go to this toolbar, edit mesh, you will see here extrude or control E. So we will be using the hotkey or the shortcut key control E to extrude. Okay, but you can also click it here. Edit mesh extrude. Okay. So what does extrude that? What does it do? So when you extrude a face or a portion of your model, we were we are extending the model without um, destroying the original shape. Okay. So we are only extending the part which we selected. So for example, let's repeat that. Okay, I selected these faces in okay, the top portion of my cylinder. I will press Control E. Okay. Then if I move tool, 
if I press W and move tool, you will notice that if I move it and I scale it, okay, the original cylinder shape is still here. The only thing that I have done is extended the model. Okay. So let's try to make a shape of a bottom of a tree. Okay. And let's do that again. Control E. Okay. Move it upwards again. Then scale it down. Okay. Control E for extrude. Scale it up. And control E again. Move it up. Scale it down. Okay. Then control E again. Scale. Control E again. Move it up. Scale it down. Okay. So for example, something like that. So we are able to create a simple model okay, using just one model and the extrude tool. Okay. So the shortcut key for extrude is control plus letter E. That is equal to extrude. Extrude is like extending the model. Okay. So from a simple cylinder like this one, we were able to create a shape similar to a tree. Okay. So let's have a more complicated example. Okay, before we okay, let's try to create a um pawn. Pawn from chess. So, for example, let's use this here. So, here is a image of a pawn, okay? Using just a cylinder like we did earlier, let's try to emulate the shape of this pawn, okay? Using extruding, okay? So, first, let's click the cylinder okay then we can scale it down so we'll make this shape first okay scale it down okay next okay so in this example after the base part okay when the there is like a um it goes inside here in this portion so i'll select this face i will extrude it upwards then scale it down so first select the all the faces then control e to extrude okay move it upwards then scale it down okay so the shape is something similar to this okay next okay we can extrude again control e then let's make this shape next okay extrude control e move it up scale it up and there so if you want a smoother curvature you can add more extrusions okay so extrude again then add minimal increments in your scaling okay. extrude again move up scale up extrude again move up okay scale down okay. so 
So it will be a repetitive process okay, until you will be successful in creating the or emulating the shape that we are trying to achieve. Good, move up, scale down, move down, okay. Right now, you can go back to object mode, hold right click object mode, just to view how, uh, how is your model so far, okay. Then we can go back to the uh, face, then just continue extrude upwards so you can just um, look at your reference photo and just follow it how it looks and this is just a simple model so you can create it easily using extrusion only so extrude there Move it upwards. Let's try to finish it. Okay. Model is not very perfect, but for demo purposes use this one so extrude then move and scale okay so before i proceed in creating the um circular shape at the top of the model okay i will share another tip you can use Okay, so that is pressing spacebar. Okay, when we press spacebar, okay, let's try it. Yeah, when you're in, uh, when you press spacebar, okay, um, you will be transported in the four views, okay? There is the top view, perspective view, and front and side view, okay? So, here you can transfer from top view. Just press spacebar again. Move your mouse in the top portion, okay? Here in the top quadrant, then press spacebar again, and then you will be transported in the top view or if you press spacebar again and then hover your mouse in the front view okay press spacebar then you will be transported in the front view so you can use this okay if you have a big screen you can do this simultaneously top view perspective view you can move simultaneously Okay, if this is, uh, if this works for you, you're more comfortable in this workspace, you can use this or you can just transfer. Okay, press spacebar, focus on the front first and press spacebar again when you're done, and then go back to perspective view. Okay, so that's just one tip using spacebar to go for views. So let's go back in extruding the face, creating the um, top portion of the pond. Okay, so extrude, extrude upwards, scale. Okay, to make a circular shape, we have to add many extrusions. So the Transition will be smooth. Okay. Move up. Stood up. Okay. 
food there. Let's do the last one. Okay. So if we go back to object mode, okay. This is the look of our model so far. Okay. So it look like it looks like a pond now. Only problem I'm seeing is the edges are rough. You can see the edges. Okay. So let's try to smoothen it. Okay. We can use this. Go to mesh display. And then soften edges. Okay. I'll change my share screen. So you can see the full screen. Hello, Ma'am Nelsi. Can I share the screen again? Thank you. So here, in the mesh display, select the model, then click mesh display. Then soften edge. Then there. So the edges are much smoother now. Okay. So let's compare the two. I'll duplicate this. To duplicate a model, just press Ctrl D. There. Mesh display. If you can soften the edge, you can also harden it. So mesh display, harden edge. Okay. So let's compare the two. On the left side, here is the hard edge, hard edge model. The edges are rough. You can see the individual edges. Okay, in the right side, you can see that the model is much smoother. Okay, without adding topology, the model looks more smooth by using mesh display soften edge. Okay. So yes, so that's the sample of creating a model just using one model from this simple cylinder. You can create many things, okay, by just using extrude, for example. Okay, it's not only the cylinder, you can also use the cube tool, okay. If you remember earlier, when I created the cube, at the simple house we can also do that by using only one model and using extrude okay select the face the top face of the cube Control e extrude it then extrude it again Control e move up scale down okay. so yes there so that's the basic of um, 3D modeling here in Maya, okay? So that's the basic fundamentals, okay? If you're using a different software, okay, there's no problem. You can also find these things, okay? There's also a counterpart on that those tools in your software, okay? But those are the basics, the how to move the model, how to interact with the viewport, okay, the basic components, the vertex, edge face, and extruding, okay, you can also see that in the other softwares, okay. Let's just duplicate this, control D and move it so we can have many pawn models. Last thing that I want to teach is let's just add color to this model. So um, let's try it. So select the model, hold right click, and then assign favorite material lamp. Okay. Okay, in the, the right side, you will see Lambert, and then there will be color. Just select the color that you want, for example, red. Okay, let's select the next model, hold right click, 
assign favorite material, Lambert. Okay, let's select yellow. Okay, so let's repeat that. Hold, select the model, right click, assign favorite material, Lambert. Okay. So we have now colorful fonts, different colored fonts. Let's make this color black. Okay. So that's just that's the basics of um, 3D modeling here in Maya. Okay. So if you have questions, I'm okay to answer those. Okay. Uh, Ma'am Nelsi. Ayan. Um... And Fusion has an option to set the preferences according to other popular software. So, do we have any such feature in Maya? Okay. So, I'm not sure if we can do that here in Maya. In the key press. But also in Blender, for example, in Blender. There is a option like that in Fusion also where you can use the um, hotkeys or shortcut keys of Maya or other software. But here in Maya, I'm not sure since this is my native software. I'm not sure if we can use other hotkeys here. Okay. Another question. Is Maya a parametric software? So. Uh, do you have any experience with Fusion 360, sir? I I don't have also uh, experience there, since I'm more in the um, game arts arts and game field. So, but you can also um, mod here. You can input parameters here. Okay, manually, if you want to use that when modeling okay um can we import 3d models from other softwares oh, can we import from other softwares to maya is that the question okay when importing other models here in maya you can go to file then import then there are file types that Maya supports. For example, the basic software, uh, basic file types like OBJ, FBX, DAE. Okay, but there are also other. Okay, you can convert the the models that you have in OBJ or FBX. So that's the universal uh, accepted by the when transferring files but there are other file formats here like atf bif svg so you can use that as well when exporting the models then you can select the model that you want to export for example you want to export this model and import it in another software let's go to file export selection if you want a selection only file export selection then Select what type of file format you want to export it. Okay. Is it Maya binary, FPX, OBJ, DAE? So you can use that step file and also export that. Then there. Okay. Ayan. Uh, can you show one render process, please? Okay. Sure. Let's try to render. I'll use the basic lights. So the render here in Maya is the Arnold render. Okay, so here are the basic render settings. Here in the uh, Arnold shelf, I will use the sky dome light, which is a basic lighting where it will light up the whole scene. Okay. I'll add also a plane. 
Okay, plane model. So we have a ground plane. Okay. Okay, let's focus the camera where we want the angle to be. So for example, right here, I'll scale it up the ground plane more. Okay. Then let's test to render it. Okay. When rendering, you just have to place the angle of the camera and then add the lighting. Then when you're happy with the composition of the scene, okay, if it's just an image, you can press this, the second icon here in the upper portion of your screen. It's like the clapper in, in film when you click that. Arnold will start rendering there. Okay. So we can change the color of the ground. Let's change it to color white. Okay, then let's start, try to render it again. So that's the rendering here in Maya, just clicking the clapper icon. Okay, so uh, sir, in Maya canvas, there is a graph. What are the sizes of graph box to understand more clear? If we want to create model in size, how this will work? Okay. Question is a bit confusing, but I'll try to read it. Okay. Oh. Let's go to settings preferences. Okay, so I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly, but the units that we're working on in Maya, okay, is at the um, default is centimeters. Okay, so each, each unit here in the channel box, for example, I select this model. Okay, each unit is in centimeters. Okay, but you can change that in the, the size that you want or unit, for example, milliliters, meters, inch, foot, depending on the scale of what you're working, um, what you're working at. So you will see here that there's a type of sort of a grid. So each, um, each point in that grid is in... centimeter okay. okay uh at all what's the recommended uh, pc specs for maya i think we can look at that in their website um, my specs. It says here that system requirements for Autodesk Maya. Okay. And at least eight gigs of RAM, but sixteen gigs or more is recommended. This space four gig available for the installation of the software also what i recommend is if you're rendering heavy okay for example if you're creating visual effects here in maya you should have a graphics card installed in your computer also um invest in a ssd hard drive okay since uh, it will load your software faster. That's my recommendations. 
Okay. So, uh, can we model using a specific dimensions? Can we use 2D drawing dimensions to create 3D model? Yes, for example, it's uh, will just be more tedious. For example, there is a measurement tools here. I'll go to the top view. Create measurement tools. Example, I want to model a cube. That's the dimension will be um, oops. here I can measure that using this uh, distance tool just select the points and I know that this distance of the the cube I created so far is 12 milliliters okay. so if I want this top side to be 14 I have a measurement tool here, distance tool. Add one again. Okay, this one. Eight. Example, yeah, there. 18. So I can select again the cube, then scale it. Go here. So now I know that this is 12 by 18 the measurement okay uh, another question sir james what's the difference of that mb file and that ma file okay. the difference is the uh, the code and how the uh, the model was saved or the scene was saved so mb file is the much newer version the binary okay so when it's save it's in binary form the codes when you uh, open it in codes format it's in binary and then when it's in ma or ascii it's in ascii format okay and so, Sir James, what's your advice to to students who are starting out with uh, Maya? Okay. Um, uh, just like I said earlier, it's at first it will be scary. Uh, ex I experienced all that also when I was starting. The the interface is overwhelming, but um. All software, all software style are like that. Okay, there's always a learning curve. Okay, just uh, continue practicing. If you know the snowball effect, at first it will be slow, but just be consistent, practicing and practicing, and then uh, slowly but surely you will be um, you will uh, improve and improve and you will not know after a few months, after three months, five months, a year, you will see the improvement. So there, just be consistent and practice. Okay, so um, <laughs> Sir James is Sir James is an animation uh, instructor, ha. <laughs> So what's your opinion on how much, uh, on how useful is Maya for engineering modeling? Any thoughts, Sir James, if you have? <laughs> uh, um, I think it's uh, much more focused on the uh, art side for film and game. But you can also use this. But the other software of Autodesk is much more um, 
um, what do you call this? It's much more fast. Ano English? Recommended for engineering. This is for, for example, animation, VFX. That's the main um, use for Maya for me. Ah, uh, yes. Just to add, no, all Autodesk softwares has its own strength. Just like what Sir James said, Maya is for VFX and animation. So some softwares are for manufacturing, product design, architecture. Okay. Okay, I think he's asking for a tip. <laughs> Left side of the canvas, there are mouse indications, sir. Can you tell us which software is that? <laughs> oh, that's the Karnak. I'll search it. Karnak on screen. So, here it is. It's a software I use when I am teaching. So it will show my key press and mouse press. Here, the Karnak keyboard utility. Okay. Any more questions, guys? If you have questions, post it in our comment section. Yeah, yeah, for Bohamed, I do post a link that's uh, using Autodesk Maya for concept uh, modeling in the automotive uh, industry. So please do uh, read and it will answer you <laughs> what's the, uh, how useful is Maya for engineering modeling. Okay. Any more question, guys? Have questions? Yeah. Thanks for such a great session. <laughs> Thank you to Muhammad. Thanks, sir. And Shut thanks, up. Sir James. So, another question. Is Maya's hair modeling to the single strand to the more composed animated ones? Is Maya's hair modeling robust? Yes. Um, I think, um, yes, there's a tool here in Maya. There are actually two tools you can use for creating hair okay. there's the this is a uh, no. it's now in the effects tab it's not in the modeling anymore since hair is a simulation if you watch the films in disney pixar the hair is realistic they're using the simulation of n hair or the um x gen hair so let's try. Let's just use the basic settings. Okay. For example, here is the uh, sphere. I created an end hair for it. When I play the timeline, it simulates the hair. If I move this cube sphere, let's test it. So the there the the hair follows the sphere. So that's another part of Maya's um, capabilities. It's the effects, the simulation of things like hair, clothes, fire, water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do post the 
link of Sir James LinkedIn. So feel free to connect with him. Okay. Ayan. So no more question, guys. <laughs> Before we end our session this afternoon. And once more, thank you, Sir James, for uh, doing this for our community. And uh, we hope to see you on another Maya session. Thank you, Ma'am Nancy. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you all to the those who attended. Thanks, Sir James. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, to claim your certificate of event participation, message us in meetup.com slash Autodesk Community Philippines. Okay, let me share that. Uh, yeah, message us in meetup.com slash Autodesk Community Philippines together with your full name, uh, your school or company name, and the title of uh, the training. Okay, don't forget uh, to message uh, the title of the training, okay? And uh, if you have future questions, you can also message us in meetup dot com okay okay so our next session will be on october 8 creating dynamic assemblies in fusion 360 if you're interested to learn uh fusion 360 join us on october 8 Okay, creating dynamic assemblies in Fusion 360. All right, thanks everyone for joining and we hope to see you on October 8th. Bye everyone. So, here we are in the glorious world of Autodesk. <laughs> As you can see, I'm just a 2D guy living in a 3D Whoa! Whoa! Not cool! Not cool! Did you see I'm filming here? Seriously! Where was I? As you can see, you can do just about anything with Autodesk applications. Why, just over there? The Revit boys are working on a lean building. And right here, inventors are designing a carbon exhaust for natural gas vehicles. AutoCAD troops are working on the electrical grid. Going hard! A 3D Studio Max team is making swarming nanobots. And the Maya guys, well, we don't know what that is yet. Artist. The point is, it can be a little intimidating getting the confidence and validation you need to prove to colleges and employers that you've got what it takes to cut the mustard. Oh no! Well that, in a nutshell, is why Autodesk and Certiport created the Autodesk Certified User, the ACU, and the Autodesk Certified Professional, ACP, certifications. The ACU is the ultimate prize to go for when you finish your Autodesk training course and have about 50 hours of experience under your belt. Getting the certification ensures your knowledge is growing, your skills are professionalizing, and demonstrates that you're developing the marketable 2D and 3D capabilities necessary for a career in your field. And if you like the sound of that, you're going to love the ACP. When you possess more advanced skills and can solve complex workflows and design challenges, then it's time to pursue recognition as a certified professional. That's right! Certification at this level proves you're ready for career advancement. After you finish more Autodesk training courses and have about 400 hours of hands-on experience, then go for it! And in case you were wondering, for those of the highest levels of design, Autodesk offers the Autodesk Certified Specialist. <sighs> the view is incredible up here. 
But rest assured, whether you're preparing for college or joining the workforce, there's an Autodesk certification out there waiting for you. And it always, always separates you from the competition.